Dear God, my my day, my day just, you know. <laughs> well, I, I had to I had to bring Chase a gift. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, he's going he's going to love this, that. He's going to throw this shit to a mirror about what he gets in here. He'll love that. <laughs> Welcome into the uh, live stream here with McCready and Siski, powered by Rain Total Body Fuel. We're actually on time on a day that has uh, moved, but it's been good. It's been a good day. Yeah. A really good Thursday. Hope everybody's having a great one. We'll get rolling here uh, pretty quick. We're going to talk about the NCAA recruiting calendar uh, stuff that's being proposed. A little bit on the uh, LSU deal that I think people thought because of a Pat Forty tweet earlier today was going to be a bigger thing than it was. Yeah, that kind of got mm. – uh... People excited this morning, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, people thought, oh, here it comes. Here it comes. And that was something totally different. Yeah. And then uh, we'll get into our get into our picks. Give somebody, everybody a free bingo spot right here. <laughs> the road to Boise <laughs> continues today. Yeah. Uh, we had some good, uh, I was telling you, I, I don't, <laughs> this is a family show, so I don't want to repeat it, but somebody had a uh, reply to the thread on Twitter. It had me cracking up pretty good yeah. coming in here. So yeah. It was good. You guys are funny, man. I like you guys. Yeah, for sure. All right. Uh, we're going to get rolling with the uh, the audio portion of this. Uh, so everybody kind of hang tight with us real quick. I wonder sure. if the, does the rain cam play like a cowbell? A little bit. We can get it, get that going like that. Yeah, let's just make sure we don't put a dent in, I mean, a, a hole in something and all of a sudden rain is spewing all over. I drank it over. before I shotgun it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, the, the story behind Tottenham is literally Carson and I were watching uh, the World Cup together, the last World Cup. Yeah. And um, we were watching England and somebody, and I said, "He's my son Carson's a big Chelsea fan. And I said, whoever scores the next goal, whatever club team that dude plays for, that's who I'm cheering for. And like five minutes later, Harry Kane scored a goal for England. And I said, who does he play for? And he goes, Tottenham. I didn't know, Tot I didn't know Tottenham and Chelsea were big rivals. I may have to, I may have to just, I'm going to come in here with some Tottenham shit on one day just to throw you off for a loop. That would mess me up because you always making fun of it. All right, uh, let's get to it. Everybody, hang tight. We'll get uh, we'll get rolling. Welcome into another edition of McCready and Siski, powered by Rain Total Body Fuel. <laughs> I'm Neil McCready. That is Tyler Siski. We'll be with you for the next I don't know hour and twenty hour and thirty minutes or so. We'll talk uh, about a number of things. We've got uh, LSU getting some probation. No big deal. That did not not a big thing, but the big thing is still sitting out there. Whether anything happens remains to be seen. Uh, there are some recruiting calendar and college football calendar issues that are sort of being circulated around by the NCAA right now to uh, member institutions to uh, possibly change things a little bit, uh, possibly change things a lot in the recruiting calendar. We'll talk about that. We'll make our uh, week four NCAA picks. For the uh, the road to Boise, and uh, we'll also make our uh, week three NFL uh, picks for uh, the same. So I studied the bingo card just to, so I would not say those things. Like it, that's what it does to my head. I know, and I have no chance. Oh no, no, no! We'll 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 butcher this. All right, wait, wait, uh, we got we're brought to you by Rain Rain Total Body Fuel. It's uh, three hundred milligrams of natural caffeine. BCAAs, electrolytes. It's got zero sugar. It's got what you need to push the limits, achieve your goals. Check them out on Instagram at Rain Body Fuel to learn more. Also, check out uh, our social media if you would. We we appreciate that. We're um, we're on Twitter at McCready Siski. It's right there on the screen. We're on Instagram McCready and Siski, and then we're uh, on TikTok even McCready and Siski podcast. We will get you to dance before this is all over with. It's possible. Uh, you're having the uh, the white gummy bear, is that correct? I am. I'm going with white gummy bear. And uh, I'm, I'm doing cherry limeade today. I'm I'm, I'm not going to venture out today. I feel like I feel like just kind of staying in in the middle of the lane. Yeah, my lane. Thursday is your need a rain day for sure. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. No, this this there there almost was an earlier rain, but um, but I'm good. Yep. I think you'll you'll get your mind right. Matter of fact, I think you're going undefeated in your picks this week. I got a feeling for you. Oh, you're out of your stupid mind. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> don't don't just try that crap with me. That's it's reverse psychology, man. I don't know what you're picking today, so I'm a little I'm interested. Yeah, no, I know we haven't. Uh, you only know a couple of them. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, so we'll uh, we'll get to we'll get to all that stuff. Um, we'll see what else. Oh, if you're in the live stream, basically you can stay with us till about nine thirty, ten o'clock because <laughs> we're here. Uh, Pete's Pigskin Preview, uh, brought to you by our friends at Walk Ons. Um, that comes to you at five o'clock. So we'll probably go till I don't know four thirty or so, and then Pete will take over at five. It's an hour and twenty. It's fantastic. It's not because of me. I'm, I didn't do anything. I just sat here and watched Pete. Tyler would eat it up because it's uh, he's got film. Yeah, I watch it every week. I like it. Yeah, it's it's a good show. This is the best one we've ever done. He got film from last week's game, uh, Ole Miss at Georgia Tech. So he breaks down. A lot of went right. A lot of what went right. A couple of the things that went wrong. Show you maybe why the quarterback thing isn't as cut and dried as people think. Decisions and that kind of thing. Pretty interesting. I, I was fascinated. And then he uh, dives into Tulsa. Of course, Ole Miss entertains Tulsa this weekend. Uh, he got film from Tulsa's game last season at Cincinnati. Cincinnati. And it was really, really good. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I learned a lot about why you spread the receivers out and bunch them and yeah. all those things. It's pretty interesting. So if yeah. it's interesting to me, it probably will be interesting to you. It is one of the shows, though, I get this every week. I get a couple of these emails, and I get it. It's people that don't want to fool with YouTube, blah, blah, blah. I'll put it in podcast form if you want to listen to it. If you just insist <laughs> on listening to it, here's the truth. That's hard. Here's the truth. I'm going to make more money off the listen yeah. than I am the view, okay? But if you want to appreciate the show, and if you don't, that's okay. <laughs> but if you want to appreciate the show, you need to watch it on YouTube. Yeah, because the film stuff, I mean, that's how you, I'm a visual guy anyway, and so I couldn't listen to somebody talk about schematics without looking at it. But, hey, before we get on, I, I did want to say, I did watch some stuff this week. I do think it's very, I know we got a lot of Ole Miss fans in here. I think it's, very interesting some of the run schemes that Ole Miss is doing um, because there's very few running backs on the planet that could run those schemes. Um, they ran a particular play that uh, Evans scored on about it was like a thirty something yard run or whatever it was. That's th there's not many running backs that could hit that just coming up from a um, stiffness mm -hmm. and things like that. They ran it earlier in the game. And if he'd stuck his foot in the ground, he'd hit his head on goalpost for about eighty. He missed a read on uh, – Evans missed a read on one of them. I think that's one of the plays that Pete shows. Okay. Yeah, he I missed it. Oh, that'd be good because he, he would have bumped his head on the goalpost. Mm -hmm. um, but I just think it's uh, – it kind of says something to me. When they're, they're scheming some runs that you usually don't do in the run game, so it's pretty impressive. The loser should have to wear a say no to potato shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and go to the game. <laughs> Protest. <laughs> Protest the treatment of potatoes. <laughs> we're doing it. It's done. We're doing that. We're coming in with science and we're protesting. We're protesting. The, un <laughs> the unethical treatment of potatoes. <laughs> potatoes have feelings too. We're doing it. Okay. We're doing it. Yeah, we'll have fun with it. Oh. Oh, God, that's great. That's really It's one funny. of those days, boss. It is. It's one of those days. All right. Um, <laughs> you want to try to get this thing back on the rails? <laughs> yeah, real quick, since I mentioned walk-ons, I'll tell you that Walk-On Sports Bistro puts everything they've got into bringing you game day with the taste of Louisiana. Dig into uh, their mouth-watering cuisine. Uh, made from scratch, Louisiana cuisine, I should say. Uh, po' boys, gumbo, gumbo, voodoo shrimp, plus fan favorites like juicy burgers and fresh salads, all in front of 70-plus TVs, 40-plus ice-cold beers on tap. Visit them in uh, Oxford or uh, Ridgeland today. I was speaking of the live stream, so at 6.30, if everything goes according to plan, and I think it will, uh, we'll have uh, the Butcher versus the Spin Instructor, Greg Jones, Campbell McCready do their weekly picks. That'll get you at 6.30. It's about 22 minutes this week. So uh, that'll get you pretty close to 7. And then at 7, Chase Parham and I will have Hand Raise Guys, presented by Comer Heating and Air, Southern Air Conditioning and Heating, Ben Mintz of Barstool Sports will join in week number one. Talk about the week ahead in college football. Also, the uh, NFL slate as they get started with uh, week three tonight, Cleveland and Pittsburgh. So we'll have that game on. I think we'll have the Washington, I'm, I should say West Virginia, uh, Virginia Tech game. I think that game's going to be on TV. We'll have it on. Yes, yeah, six six thirty. Yes, yeah, so we'll have some football on. We'll take your calls on the Raptors music and food hotline, all that stuff. So wrapping up a pretty busy day at the network. Uh, so yeah, that's that. All right, uh, we'll jump in. Let's so do it. Let's get in. Um, ah. We'll touch LSU quickly. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on this because I don't think there's a lot there. Yeah. 
Pat Forty had a tweet out this morning that it was, oh, it was, you know, but, but, but batting down the hatches or something along those lines. There was lines. a lot of them that, that – I wonder who tweets first and then they all feel like they have to follow. Well, I'd love to know – I'll guess how that happened. Someone at the NCAA who is their source – sent them a text or something, LSU's happening today at noon. And they all went, ooh, here we go. And then as soon as the person, the source, saw the tweets, they're like, no, 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 not that case, just the other case. And so they all have to start backtracking gotcha. without it making it look like, hey, we got this directly from a source in the NCAA building because yeah. they did get it directly from the source. Yeah, I was on, actually on the phone with one a really good source <laughs> when all that came out. And so I was able to – Ask some things and and realize what it was pretty quick. So you want to talk about that? Yeah. So LSU gets a year of probation, a five thousand dollar fine. That'll hurt. <laughs> How seriously though? What is what's the point? Just to say that you find somebody. What's the point? I mean, you uh, get fifty thousand for for tearing the goalpost down, but you get five thousand for recruiting violations. Yeah. Anyway. Former offensive line coach uh, James Craig gets a three-year show cause, and um, and then they're also were they got some of I guess the fine and the probation and stuff is also due to COVID violations for gear, COVID contact. I don't know, whatever. Yeah, so they're one of many. I think we talked about this on this show earlier, um, one of the summer episodes. But look, people broke rules during COVID. No. And so they're going, okay, we're going to get – they got Arizona State, you know, which was blatant, um, and cost Herm Edwards his job eventually. Um, but they got they got Herm Edwards at Arizona State. They got uh, – who was the other one besides LSU? They got somebody else for COVID rules. But in a nutshell, the the uh, allegedly the guy is uh, accused of giving – this is my favorite part. They said used LSU workout gear. Now, come on, man. <laughs> don't – hey, don't – you know, don't piss down my back and tell me it's raining. All right. I mean, come on. Yeah. I mean, anyway. And so, and then they did a, uh, a, a stadium tour, uh, during COVID, all this stuff, contact, whatever. It was a dead period. They got them. But, uh, yeah, my favorite part was, uh, five year, uh, excuse me, one year probation, a $5,000 fine. Yeah. But it is what it is. It's my understanding that this had absolutely nothing to do with, the main case, which is still a major basketball infractions case. There is a major football infractions case. LSU is desperately trying to separate the two. I, I concur. I concur. I am, what I heard today, and look, I don't cover LSU, okay? So let me be clear here. I don't cover LSU. I don't spend a lot of time finding out what's going on with their NCAA case, and I avoid NCAA people like the play. <laughs> who, hey, who, who avoids them more, uh, you or Brennan? Probably Brennan. <laughs> but when I had the LSU guy, when I had the NCAA guy corner me in a hotel in Atlanta wanting me to, like, just spill the, the beans on Ole Miss, and I was like, whoa, is this how you guys do stuff? Oh. I mean, I sat there and talked to the guy, and I was like, Number one, I don't know a lot of the things you're talking about. And number two, if I did, I, I'm not getting into this. This be no. <laughs> That's and, how they do it, though. And I was like, I was like, you know, he's like, do you know about any secret meetings or whatever? I'm like, well, like, which, which school are we talking about? Because like every school has secret meetings. I mean, what are you t what are you talking about? This is insanity. But I also walked away from that meeting going, they're getting screwed. <laughs> Because that dude, <coughs> let's just say that guy had taken his Viagra as it pertained to Ole wow. Miss. That guy was. Why not Cialis? You know, I don't like Cialis because I, I don't like this stupid tub commercial on the hill. It never makes any sense. Like, seriously, think about this for a minute. If you were to haul two of those giant porcelain tubs up to the top of a hill, Fill them with water, even though you have no water source. So you've got to figure you're going to some water thing and coming back, trying to somehow keep the water warm because you don't want to get into cold water before. <laughs> and then you both got into this tub 
by the time you finish taking a bath in separate tubs, by the way, so for the Cialis to work, at some point, both of you have to get out, or one of you has to join one in the tub. It just feels like a lot of work, and by the end of the, I just don't think you'd A, be in the mood, B, I don't think physically you'd be able, and C, by the end of the, all the tub hauling and water hauling, would you even, it just would be the last thing on your mind at that point. So got it, Cialis, not a sponsor, got it. <laughs> yeah. No, Viagra, if you want to call, we're, listen, we're here. I mean, you see all of our social media right there, just reach out. Oh. I don't need 45 minutes a day. I'm in trouble. <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, the cold water. <laughs> wouldn't that sort of counteract the Cialis, right? <clears throat> if it doesn't, it's a good drug. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> oh, All right. Oh, um, man, I, I haven't seen you get that excited about something since COVID masks, <laughs> since mask policies. No, I just was, it's just an observation. That's all. All right, NCAA recruiting calendar. There's a bunch of things here. All right, making we'll making week zero open, which is that that week that um, I guess they played Northwestern and Nebraska, Nebraska. played out in so Dublin, Hawaii and Vanderbilt played in Honolulu. Previously, you had to get a waiver um, to play these games, and the NCAA you just was it wasn't uh, open for everyone, if that makes sense. So you had to get a waiver and all that stuff. They're just trying to create. Because they know that that the uh, playoff is coming, and so they're trying to give schools an opportunity if they want to add an additional bye week, they can. All right, I'm generally for this. We'll just take these one at a time. Okay. No one cares what my opinions are, except it is our show, so I, I'm going to talk about it. It is correct. Um, I generally like this because I like the idea of a second off week. I think it's important if you're going to play <coughs> twelve to potentially fifteen, sixteen games. I, I think building in a second bye week is a good idea. Look at the NFL model. I, I, what I'm not crazy about, now the fans love it. Here's what I'm not completely crazy about is, man, the idea of putting a football game in the Deep South on August the 27th or something with all the TV stuff, and you're going to play a football game at 3 o'clock in the afternoon in Oxford or Starkville or Baton Rouge or something, for God's sake. I mean, can you imagine – you can say you care about the student athlete and then you schedule a game during like heat stroke time and forget the athletes for a minute. I don't mean, I don't mean right. it that way, but they're conditioned for it. The 57-year-old woman that did not spend the summer getting up at 5 in the morning to run wind sprints is not quite as conditioned for it. You're, you're, you're putting fans at risk a little bit in those elements. I, I, I wish... I wish there was a week zero. I, I've long said this. I wish that the college football season started a little later and went a little longer. Yeah, what you're saying though, I mean, but the difference between week zero, and week one is really nothing. It would be, it would benefit what you're saying is just backing it up three weeks. Now we're having a, a significant change. Yeah, because there's not really a change between the weather between week one and week zero. It now week zero and week four or, or whatever week we're in now. Yeah, you know there is, but you know that. I get I get you on that. So, but but I'm cool with it in general. And I mean, I I think I I think the week zero, if you could figure, it, and and a lot of teams would, they would figure out ways to play games in domed facilities and things of that nature. Which they do now. You know, a lot they of these yeah. Chick Fil A games and the one in Jerry World, they, they do that now. They had one in SoFi, I think. You know, I mean, they they do that now. Um, but if you truly open it up to everyone, you're not going to be able to do that. You know, what I mean, Arkansas State is not going to be able to play. Um, Monroe at Jerry World. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's going to be on campus somewhere. So, no, I'm with you on that one. <clears throat> All right. Uh, they want to move bowl games up a week to start the week after the championship. So, that's the weekend that Army and Navy play in Philadelphia. Um, I'm, I'm personally for this. This okay. is me personally. I think you're not going to find any athletic department person that's against this for multiple reasons. Um, but – all that being said, there's going to be two pushbacks on this. Okay. All right. The first one is going to be the presidents because we're you're fixing to find out what we really think about student athletes. Okay. Because in the history of since I've been involved with the NCAA, doing anything during finals time is a no no. I mean, it is a no no. I mean, it's dead. You can't come. You know, they'll you know kick everybody out. Whatever. 
But if you start bo- moving bowl games up to December 10th, you're going to start putting football games in the middle of finals. You can't do that. Well, that's when you're fixing to find out if it's a student athlete or if it's an athlete first. Because with all this money that's going in and they're starting to get big checks, they, you know, are you now you're starting to turn into an employee and you're going to do, you know, and that's, well, that's when, that's what's interesting to me about this whole thing. And that might be, might be what's coming down the road is where they, they are deemed employees and they unionize. And, but even in a unionizing situation, I think one of the bargaining things you would say is, hey, look, if, if we have to maintain academic eligibility to play, we've got to be able to focus on finals week. Yeah, I mean, I'm with you. Um, that's going to be the pushback is because the presidents are the ones that are going to be voting for this. So that's where the pushback is going to be. And then it's just a matter of time till somebody starts bitching about losing of recruiting time. Because if you got, you know, your championship week and then you got to turn around and you got a bowl game, you know, the next week or whatever it is, then you got signing day the next week, you didn't get anybody's living room. Well, and part of the bowl thing, and tell me if I'm wrong, you've, yeah. you've gone to bowls. Part of the bowl thing for the longest time was that it's a reward for the athlete. They get to go on a trip someplace. They get to, you know, it's not all serious. You've got, used to be, you know, everybody said, well, you get 15 extra practices and stuff like that. I think that's quickly become less important than it ever was. But um, you want the they want there to be a reward if they're turning around immediately after a, a championship game and going to a bowl game in finals week. I don't know how much of a reward that is for anybody. No, I mean it wouldn't be. It'd be tough. I mean, especially if you had somebody, you know, <laughs> having to take a final. What they would end up doing was taking the finals online or whatever they're doing at the bowl site. And no, that wouldn't be a reward at all. So that sucks. Uh, PC Rebel says, "Why do colleges need to play overseas? Well, it's it's a reward for kids, and I, yeah, it's a free trip to. It's, it's an experience. Like the ninety nine percent of them will never go overseas in their life. Northwestern spent their kids spent five or six days, I think, in Dublin. I mean, it had, had to be a hell of an experience. Yeah, I, I, I think it's cool. Um, <clears throat> all right. So it also they want to put dead periods in at the end of the season. So right." Before the transfer portal comes open. Which is December the 4th this year. Is that correct? 5th, I think. Okay. Fifth. Right around there. All right. So, at the end of that season, they're, they're, they're proposing a 48-hour dead period. So, basically, you can come, instead of going immediately on the road to go recruiting mm-hmm. or where you end up at Full Moon Barbecue in Birmingham before you get a phone call to get back on the plane and come back home, that, yeah. that, that time period would be dead. Um, so you can meet with your players and, and basically either process them out or find out somebody's going to leave and you'll kind of know what your needs are and the players can then enter the portal. Because if you don't have that dead period, then you, you're going to be on the road recruiting and you're going to find out that your backup running back is now uh, going in the portal and you're, you're you know 600 miles away and right. not able to address it. I like that. I do too, but I think it needs to be more like a week. I don't think two days is, is long enough. Okay. All right. I think it needs to be a little bit longer than that because you can't have a, a you got to meet with what, 100 and, 120 players in two days? And there's going to be some some meetings that are going to be a little bit longer. I mean, th- those meetings take, I know I see Brennan in here. He's been a part of it. Those meetings are a week long. You know, it takes that long to do things because you're also trying to recruit and make phone calls and things like that. You're not, that's not the only thing you're doing during that time. <clears throat> But I think it needs to be about a week. <clears throat> uh, moving the early signing period back five days. Here's the problem with that, Tyler, is that you move it back five days, you basically move it to Christmas. It's Right now it's like December the 18th, 19th. You can move it back to Christmas Eve? Yeah, they're talking about moving it back to the third, depending on the calendar how it falls, right? But it's going to be the third Monday of December. Okay? I think this is completely dumb. Monday or Wednesday? Third Monday. Really? Yes. Specifically Monday. Um. Basically, they're giving you an extra five days is what it said, right? So <clears throat> I've been on this proponent, especially since the new trend, and this is the concern. We'll go ahead and talk about it here. Uh, visiting with a lot of staffs this week, I did not bring this up. They brought it up to me. A lot of concern with the staffs around the country with the, the portal window going open on December the 5th, and these kids aren't allowed to enter the portal right now. So there's going to be this massive influxion of portal guys on December the 5th. Well, you got signing day less than two weeks later, okay, to that, this year. Well, and you got your guys going, your guys leaving, you got all these people coming in the portal, you got to go evaluate them. You don't have time to 
build relationships, yada, 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 the things that it takes to sign a kid, Mm -hmm. especially mid-year. So what does that force you to do, Neil? Forces you to tamper. Forces you to tamper. And don't get me wrong, some staffs could care less. They're going to tamper anyway. But contrary to popular belief, there are staffs out there that actually like to follow the rules and try to follow the rules. It makes them extremely uncomfortable. Well, I mean, I, I get the I get the discomfort because if in an environment where everything's recorded, you get caught tampering and it goes viral or something, the NCAA probably has no choice but to do something. And so even though I don't think the NCAA has the – I don't think they have the taste for this blood. It's too much. And in, I'm going to defend them for a minute. Yeah. You're asking a, a short-staffed group – Hey, on top of everything else, we want you to we want you to investigate tampering. I mean, if you're in the meeting in the room there, you're like, God, there's no way. We, we you want us to investigate a hundred some odd programs that are tampering? No. So I don't think they have a taste for that. There's already tampering. I mean, you're there's a lot of tampering happening, even if it's somewhat unintentional. There's a lot of tampering, but. I see what you're saying. If you if you make it where there's only ten days or so, it will just be chaos. It's going it's going to be chaos anyway. I mean, there <clears throat> the levels that some of these staffs are going to right now in their I guess their college scouting departments essentially what they are now. I mean, they're literally just looking at every kid in the country and trying to find players that you know, hey, let's call his high school head coach and see if he's interested or not well and you have to have a a really good working knowledge of the entire country because when a kid jumps in you've got to make a decision fast yeah it's actually it sounds like a lot because the uh the geographical footprint of everybody but if you really think about it what are you looking at you're looking at 130 schools right yeah well think about this and in a normal recruiting area you're gonna have between 400 and 600 schools to your to one coach so it's really not as bad as that – now, the footprint, because, you know, you may have two or three schools in this state or whatever, but uh, it's just a lot of work because the players are pretty – all all the all players are pretty good. So you think they should just move the signing day back to February? It needs where, to go back to February, to yeah. What about the early enrollees? They can still enroll early? Same way we did it for, yeah, for the course years. of time, right, is, is if you got an early enrollee, he signs a, you know, grant and aid agreement, shows up the first day of class, and he's yours. And then he just signs on signing day. Signs on Sunday, just like they did forever. Uh, they want to allow contact with high school juniors, which has kind of been kind of been forbidden for a long time. You you couldn't you couldn't do that except in particular windows. You could do it on junior days. You could do it. Well, they're talking about off campus contact. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. That was that was when a kid came to your campus. You could obviously yeah, spend you can do time anything on your campus. But this would allow coaches to get on the road and talk to high school juniors. In person. Top five dumbest things I've ever heard come out of the NCAA's facility. Why? They're, here's, it goes back to NIL, right? They're trying – why did NIL – Why did? I mean, I know it went to court, but why are they just turning everything loose? Because they can't figure out who's paying who. They can't – people have gotten too good. You can't prosecute it, right? Mm-hmm. Same thing with this bump rule. They came down probably about – I don't know. I see Brandon, like I said, Brandon was in here a minute ago. Maybe he's still in here. They came in, I want to say it's five, six years ago, and they they were like, hey, they're going to start hammering bumps. They're going to take an emphasis on bumps. They're going to hammer you if you have a bump. Now, what a bump is, is I go to, uh, I go to you know, Oxford High School over here. I'm going to see a senior. And then all of a sudden, while I'm in there, this freshman or sophomore kid that's really good that I want to recruit shows up, and I talk to him too. That's illegal. All right? And they want to, and they want to stop that. Now, I've been on the road many times, and I don't mind telling this because whatever, I'm out of it. I've been on the road many times where I would go see a kid and other coaches would be in a shut-door meeting during the spring with an underclassman. Highly illegal, okay? But am I going to tell on the guy? No. But if I didn't like the guy, I'd probably say something to him about it. Like, hey, dude, you need to chill out or whatever. You know, if it's in our area, whatever. I, we would, Depends on who the guy was, if we were going to have words or not. But – that happens a lot, a lot, okay? And especially what where it got really out of hand is when they did the early signing day. Well, most of the Power 5 schools are done with their recruiting class in December. Well, you got all this whole month of January that you're going on the road. Well, where, where are you going to see? You're going to go see the juniors, right? 
So if I'm if I'm the D line coach at Ole Miss, okay, mm-hmm. sure, and I fly to Kansas to see a junior, I'm not just going to go in there and say hello to the coach and not wave at the kid or see the kid or whatever. Does that make sense? Like sure. You've flown across the country to go make your face seen at the school. By God, I've spent when the school spent twenty five hundred dollars for me to come out here and, and the kid's going to see my face. Make sense? Yeah. So that's where all the bump stuff came into. So what they're trying to do with this is they're trying to they can't legislate it because nobody's turning anybody in. They know what's going on. They can't prove a lot of them. Some of them they can, some of them they can't. Coaches have gotten smart. And they're just saying, okay, you can go see it. Well, here's why it's a dumb idea. When And you've seen this. When you get to what we call the hot list, these are the guys we're recruiting. When it's the seniors, man, we got this thing down to like 50. Yeah. Our junior list, I, I asked Clay and Connor this morning, I was like, what was our last junior list? I mean, it's 300, 350. Yeah. All right. Because you're trying to find out, do I want them, do I not, this yeah. and that. Well, if I don't go and see that kid, somebody else is, and I'm going to fall behind in recruiting. Yeah. And so now i got all this pressure to go see, do home visits with these juniors and go see them in person. And it's not 50 kids, it's 350 it, kids. It's ridiculous. Right? Yeah. And, so, and that's at an SEC program. <clears throat> Imagine being at a group of five level or a, you know, a mid-major, a, you know, a Central Florida. Or somebody like that, that you now your your list is at 500, 600 kids, and you feel like if you don't go and get this kid seen, you're going to fall behind in recruiting. It's a terrible idea because now all these resources you're having to spend, the time you're having to spend, you think recruit coaches are burnt out now in recruiting? Sure. And I know fans fans go, I don't care. They make a lot of money. It's a great job. No, you you you, you should care. You you also don't want to continue. The calendar is sped up enough as it is, in my opinion. You don't want to speed it up more. It's going to lead to more mistakes. It's going to lead to more kids not getting opportunities that they would have gotten. It's just, frankly, the calendar the way it is right now is a little fast. But it's okay. But if you speed it up more, you're just going to create a chaos that's not necessary. Yeah, it's completely So don't you anticipate that that's what they're hearing? Right? To the NCAA's credit, they're putting this out and getting feedback. Yeah, I want to say that too before I forget. I want to, and I, I look. I call a spade a spade. But when they when they do something right, I like. I don't get a chance to give them props too much. Sure. The one thing that I guess as a fan, uh, I would be excited about is the NCAA took this calendar and they basically floated it to all the people actually working in recruiting. Yeah. So now that finally. This is maybe the first time that I can ever remember that they actually said, hey, look, you guys that actually do this shit for a living, why don't you look at this and see what you think? And so they're able to poke holes in it and, and do things. And, and to their credit, and I want to give Jim Phillips, who was the commissioner of the ACC, mm-hmm. and he's got his as much as he's got on his plate right now, he's the one that's in charge of this, and he made the decision to do that. And I thought that was great. And shockingly, it really didn't come from the NCAA. I guess we got to give him credit, but it came from a commissioner in the ACC. So good for him, man. It's it's about time that they did some stuff like that. Sure, absolutely. All right. The other thing you have is prohibit coaches from visiting transfers on campus of their school. <laughs> yeah. So right as the rule states right now, let's say uh, this happened this past year, by the way, um, uh, into a in a town not so far far away. When you got kids in the portal. All right, so let's say there was a kid. Let's just happen to say there was a kid at Ole Miss in the portal. Okay. And another SEC school comes to see him. Okay. That guy lives with people. He lives with other college players. And so college coaches were going into these houses and basically, hey, man, hey, the coach at – give me a school. Kentucky. A coach at Kentucky is coming in. Uh, tonight, and so all the players that were interested in maybe possibly transferring would show up at his house. Oh, got it. And those kids are not in the portal, and now you're getting more kids talked into going into the portal. Does that make sense? That happened a lot. Okay, but... <clears throat> it's a recruiting trip on kids that aren't in the portal. But that's not on campus. No, it, it's in their... Some of it was. In their dorm rooms. Okay. Yeah. No, some of it was. And on campus housing or whatever. But what, what, if they, what if they met at a restaurant? It's still illegal contact. 
it's still a, it's, it's still a violation. If they had a recruiting conversation with, with a, another school's kid that right. wasn't in the portal, that's a major violation. Okay. Yeah, it, that's that's a good rule, good for you, because that that was going on a lot okay. across the country. That's why some of these schools had five kids in the portal, and then all of a sudden next week you had twenty. Interesting. Yeah. All right, a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. It can be tough to train your brain to stay in problem-solving mode when faced with the challenge in life, but when you learn how to find your own solutions, <clears throat> excuse me, there's no better feeling. A therapist can help you become a better problem-solver, making it easier to accomplish your goals, no matter how big or small. I've used therapy as a way to handle stress, clear negative thoughts. It was a life-changer for me. If you're thinking of uh, giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. It's convenient, accessible, affordable. It's entirely online. Get matched with a therapist after filling out a brief survey. Switch therapist anytime. When you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash MPW today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash MPW. And we're also brought to you by uh, Clean Side Wipes. They're the EPA 2021 Safer Choice Partner of the Year. They're, uh, they kill COVID in 30 seconds. It's the only one on the market. It's a broad-spectrum, hospital-grade, antimicrobial efficacy, citric acid base, no harsh chemicals, simple one-step, no rinse cleaning and disinfecting. Removes film left over by harsh chemicals such as ammonia, bleach, and alcohol. It has the lowest toxicity rating allowable by the EPA, which means... It poses the lowest risk to the health of employees, patients, students, customers, or the environment. Clean side germicidal wipes deliver powerful efficacy against pathogens without the potential harmful effects of other chemical disinfectants. All in one easy to use wipe. It's great for schools, daycares, nurseries, hospitals, long term care facilities, office buildings, households, and more. It's uh, available in wipe and ready to use spray. To learn more, contact my friend Todd Abbott at wipesandgloves at gmail.com. That's wipes, W-I-P-E-S, and gloves at gmail.com. You know what time it is? It's time for some picks. Make it rain! <laughs> it's time! Oh, crack them out. Are we going to go NFL first or are we going college first? You know what? It's up to you. You won last week, so you get to pick. I mean... Let's go NFL because I know Grind is ready to go some NFL stuff today. And then because we got, we'll talk about college probably till we get out of here. Okay. Let's do NFL first. Five NFL games each. All I, right. I went, what did I go? One and four in the NFL? You went one and four. Yeah. I'm, if I'm nothing but I'm consistent, I've gone two and three, two and three. So I was abused last week. You were. I was. I was abused. We had a lot of social media fun with you this week, being abused on the on the Ravens game. There, there would be, uh, there would be a, an investigation into what happened to me if this were in a different way. I mean, it was bad. Yeah, you got Sandusky I, yeah, three times. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, three times. <laughs> hey, that's just how it goes. All right, I'm doing. I have. Uh, I have burned sage. I have done seances. Yeah. I have uh, spun around, flipped a coin, asked uh, my dog. I've gotten a new system that I'm going to try this week to see how it works out. All right, here we go. My first game is the Bills, the Buffalo Bills. Yes, sir. are going down south to play my fighting Harry Potters, the Miami Dolphins. Mm -hmm. The Dolphins yep. are six-point underdogs. Yep. I'm taking the Dolphins plus six against the Buffalo Bills. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. I am so glad to hear that because I am taking the Buffalo Bills from now until the end of the damn season. I'm laying whatever the hell I got to lay. If they're going to play the way they've been playing the first two weeks, I will lay six in Miami. Josh Allen, the Bills, they look like damn – beast right now give me the bills i'll lay what you had six i had five and a half whatever i'll lay six points i'll lay six points buffalo minus six at miami i'll start counting my money on that one wow you know what happens a lot you know what happened the last time you went on this spiel right you know 
you you like to live in the past a lot. <laughs> I'm a future. I'm a person who lives in the present. I learn from the past and take that into the present. Dude, I, I'm telling you, man, my guy's going. My guy's going to cast some spells on Josh Allen. That's what's going to happen. You'll need more than a spell. What's the What's the Harry Potter? I, I get them. Is it uh, Gwendendorf's? What What the hell's? I don't remember. Griff, Gryffindor. Gryffindor. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's what he's going to do. He's going to put some spell on the, on Josh Allen, and, and he's going to cover six points. All right. All right. My second game. You're going to start seeing where I'm going with my sage burning here. Okay. Okay. My second game, the Baltimore Ravens. Oh, all right. Are going to Boston. I don't have this one. And they're playing the Madden playing play callers of the New England Patriots, where they have defensive coordinators calling plays for the offense, and they have special teams coaches coaching quarterbacks. And I'm taking, by God, I'm taking the New England Patriots plus three at home against the Baltimore Ravens. Okay. I don't hate that. I may even put a damn money line on it on Sunday. I think they're going to win the game. New England will. First home game in Boston. They're going to poison the chowder. It's Foxborough. Same thing, right? Well, no, it's not Boston. But in the suburb? Right, it's close, yeah. I've never been, so I don't know. It used to be spelled Foxborough, F-O-X-B-O-R-O-U-G-H, and then they changed it to Foxborough, F-O-X-B-O-R-O. They well, literally changed the spelling of their city? Yeah, I wonder why. I, 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 Are you serious? Yeah, probably because people we've dumbed down. Don't make people spell. We'd say, ah, just whatever. You're shitting me. No, I'm totally serious. They changed the spelling of a city. Well, I mean, the, the, what's, the way it's listed. So this is like, like in, in recent times? I don't know whether they've actually changed it or what, what the deal is, but like people used to call it Foxborough, and that's the way it was spelled. Like I would, when you read a dateline from a Patriots game, it was Foxborough. Okay. B-O-R. Now it's Fox Boro. Yeah. Didn't get that one. All right. What you got, boss? You know, a team was good to me last week. It only has, it's only could be one team. <laughs> <laughs> team was good to me last week. And I think they're going to be good to me again. I like the Jacksonville Jaguars. Getting seven on the road against the Chargers team that beat up. Justin Herbert's beat up. Mm. No one's exactly sure what his mm. situation is. Some bitch gonna play. I'm gonna take my seven points. I think the Jags. <laughs> I think the Jags are easily the most improved team in the NFL. Yeah, and now they're playing with I'll some confidence. That. Playing with a little confidence, they're gonna go out there. They're gonna be jacked up to play the Chargers. They're gonna cover the seven. Hey, on that game, what do you think the odds are that the same doctor? that gave Tyrod Taylor the shot in the ribs <laughs> gives you think he's anywhere close to Justin Herbert on Sunday at about 11 what time's the game is it three o'clock again I would assume all right so about the 255 mark do you think that doctor's anywhere close to Justin Herbert the one that punctured the lungs of you remember that that's why Tyrod Taylor that's why Justin Herbert is Justin Herbert you didn't remember that yeah I mean the doctor comes in to give him a shot in the ribs because he had bruised ribs yeah and he punctures Tyrod Taylor's lungs I know I've never heard of that happen it's incredible I bet that dude I well, bet he, Taylor's suing I bet he has his license revoked in that I bet he can't come in SoFi Stadium shouldn't Taylor win that suit yes I mean that's the yeah, yeah I mean because they don't to my now I don't know what's in the contracts and the NFL contracts and all that, but I can tell you from a college standpoint, you don't sign any kind of wa- medical waiver if they give you malpractice. So, yeah, I imagine that's not – because that cost him. Dude, he could probably sue for loss of earnings too because, I mean, he was the starting quarterback. Well, he did. He did. He sued, he sued for it. It's at least $5 million. Yeah, he, he sh- they should double it. All right. My third game, Neil. Okay. You're going to start seeing a pattern here. The New, York, the New Orleans Aints. Okay. The Aints, mm-hmm. that ain't got no offense or a quarterback, mm-hmm. are going to Charlotte, Charlotte mm-hmm. to play my boys at Carolina. Yep. Carolina is a three-point dog to New Orleans. Oh, is it three now? It's three. I had it at two and a half. Yeah. Okay. Three, three points. I checked it right before I came. Okay. I'm taking Carolina plus three at home against the Aints of New Orleans that ain't got no offense. Well, as you can see, I had that game as well, so I'll kill the suspense here. I am also taking the Carolina Panthers. I'll take three. I was going to take just two and a half, but if you're going to give me a half point, cool, I'll I'll take it. 
I'll take the Panthers plus three versus the Saints. I did not like a lot of what I saw from New Orleans last week. Beyond the fight and all that, I Jameis is hurt. They're playing him anyway, which tells me they got nobody behind him. And I just don't like a lot of what I see from them. They, they, they look like a team that the window has closed. And sometimes you don't know that the window is closed until you realize that it's fully closed. You think it's open, and you go to open it, and you're like, nope, it's, it's not. Shut. It's, <laughs> it's shut. I think the – they – and I don't blame them for this. They went probably a little too long with Drew Brees. It was sentimental. Probably two years. Two years. It was sentimental. He won a Super Bowl. He probably saved the franchise in New Orleans. He's a, a revered citizen there. He made it home. He yeah. gave back. All of that stuff. I, I 100% understand it. But I think they're paying for it this year. Yeah, I, I do not disagree with you. I th- they got to get a – I was shocked that they didn't try to make a move and, and that quarterback, but whatever. It's not my business. All right, my fourth game, Neil. Yep. I'm going to get off my cue here for a minute. I, this is the one I'm going to go with the way I have used to be betting. This mm-hmm. is my one game I'm trying on my own. By the way, can we bet the Monday night game? Uh, I guess we can, but it, it's mon- it'll be after our show on Monday. Okay, the Monday night. Is, that, is Dallas and the Giants the Dallas Monday night? Dallas and the Giants are – they're, they're a night game. I, want I to think say it's, it's Monday, Monday night. night. Okay, Monday night or Sunday night. I, I won't. I won't games. bet it. I'll just tell you one of my games was going to be the Cowboys plus one at the Giants. I think Dallas is beating the Giants. Really? I do. Okay. And I'm I'm happy for Giants fans out there, but it feels like fool's gold. They're two and zero, dude. I know. And I don't. I don't, th- I don't think they can block Dallas defensively. I don't think they can score on Dallas. But here's the thing. Let me ask you a question. If Parsons doesn't play in that game, when you look at look at what happened with I think Cincinnati's in trouble. We'll talk about Cincinnati in a minute. But yeah. if Cincinnati when they're when they don't have a dominant defensive end on the other side, I like Cincinnati. So I think they're I would probably probably gonna bet them on my own, just not on this one. But okay. uh I'm not I don't know, man. I, I can't I can't I can't bet on the Bengals right now. I'm not, but I'm just right. saying I mean, until they until they look somewhat adequate on the offensive front. I can't bet on the Bengals. I haven't decided on the Giants game yet because it's a Monday night game. I'll, I will bet it. I just don't know which, which way I'm going yet, but I'm probably leaning Giants on the, on the, at home. All right, so the game, I'm, I'm, my fourth game, I'm going to get on my old uh, way here, but the Packers are going to Tampa Bay. The Packers are one-point dogs. So I'm laying the one. I'm taking the Packers plus one against Tampa Bay. When I bet it on my own, I'll probably do money line because I'm not giving a point. I'll just take the money line to see if they win or not. Okay. Uh, it's the same thing for me. Um, dude, I think Tampa Bay's in trouble. I don't know what in the hell is going on down there. They got Mike Evans is going to be out. They got guys yeah. hurt. Julio Jones doesn't know if he wants to retire or he wants to play receiver. Every time he gets a scratch on his knee now. Julio went from being one of the toughest son of a bitches on the planet to being soft. Okay? Like, if you're not, if you're not well enough to get your knee bumped in practice and you can't play, then you probably should retire. He's got his money. Retire. Yeah. Okay. And Tom Brady, look, I, the GOAT, love him to death. Have you seen pictures of this guy lately? Yeah, it's something's, something's up. I mean, the dude is look like looks like Skeletor, man. His face is going off. I mean, he looks – he's aging. For the first time ever, he looks – he's looking old. Well, he is old yeah, for but, football Yeah, but he didn't last year. No, but Father Tom gets everybody. He's like the dude from uh, Indiana Jones in the uh, – when they, he goes and drinks the wrong the wrong glass of the Holy Grail and he starts aging, that's what he looks like. It's it's just not a game meant to be played by men in their mid forties. I agree, it, it's not. But he's taking Wednesdays off for personal time. Now, apparently, there are multiple bucks who get Wednesdays off. No, veterans. I get Wednesdays off, but for personal time, sure, kiss my ass. You personal times in off season. The NFL is not for everybody. It's not it's not a free league. Okay, you're either on the team or you're not. Get your ass to practice and well, either and either go through and mental the, reps or not. And the quarterback needs to be there. Dude, you're Even supposed if, to be the captain of the team. Yeah, you're right. Even if the quarterback says, hey, on Wednesdays I'm not going to throw, I, I need to save the fastball. Cool. cool. But be there but, and be a leader. Right, be at practice. There's a reason that C's on his chest. I, I agree. Earn it. And I know you're the greatest and you don't have to prove anything to anybody. But if you're going to play, 
Oh, you're talking about Tom again. I'm sorry. But, I mean, let's go. All right. My fourth pick. I don't like what I've seen from the Denver Broncos. And I do like what I've seen from the 49ers. (laughs) Oh, 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 oh. Listen, nothing against Trey Lance. He sucks. But the 49ers improved so much via injury. I mean, that's not – that's not. we're going to have that conversation here in a minute too, but, yeah, you're not wrong. My boy Jimmy G looked – the shoulder looks a lot better. Some of the throws that he was having a hard time making last year with the shoulder, the shoulder got repaired. And whoever did the surgery I think did a pretty good job <laughs> because he had his fastball back. He's never going to be an elite arm, but he's, he's a leader. They responded to him. He took them to the NFC title game last year. He did. They went. I saw it. I watched the game. (laughs) They were there. He was the quarterback. They almost beat the Rams. They almost went to the Super Bowl with Jimmy Garoppolo at quarterback. I've got San Francisco minus a point and a half at Denver. I'm looking at that. Did you see his contract? Like what? Like when he plays now? If they like, he made three hundred fifty thousand dollars in bonus money. Look, we said this on the show this morning. I'm going to say it again. He's in a great spot. He's in the catbird seat. because one He's of, getting paid in the offseason. One of two things is going to happen to him in the offseason. Either the Niners are going to go, hey, we've got to figure out what we do about Lance. We'll figure it out. But, Jimmy, you're our quarterback. Or the Niners are going to do the thing where they go, hey, we're too far in on this. We've got to make Lance the starter. We've got to do this. At which point, Jimmy's going to go, hey, cool. And there's going to be about 10 teams that will make you our starter. Here's the contract for whatever – Bunch of money. And so if you're Jimmy Garoppolo, just play well. Be a good soldier. Play well. And at the end of the year, it's all going to work out. You'll either stay in San Francisco and be the guy, or you'll end up in New Orleans or Carolina or I don't know, wherever. There's Tampa. Tampa. Tampa's a possibility. Green Bay. Aaron Rodgers might go, you know what? I'm not doing this any longer. Who knows? Yeah. I have no idea. But there will be opportunities for him in other markets to go be the, the, the Giants. They could leave the Daniel Jones thing behind. They could take who knows. Yeah, he's actually playing smart. He is right now. He's, he's not, not playing. He's not losing games. Uh, Dable and them are doing a good job of of not putting him. They're they're not asking him to do anything other than just manage the game, and he's doing a pretty good job of it. I love Brian. I love me some Brian Dable, by the way. Yeah, he's good because he, so, he's not scared of getting somebody's ass. But Garoppolo, when they but Garoppolo's a good quarterback. This this whole thing about oh he's he's mediocre. He's this. He's that. No, he's not. He's a little better than that. He's okay. He's not great. He's not. He's not the top of the five, top five guys in the league or anything. But they got better. No. La- they got better last week. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how you bench the guy to begin with, but that's what happens when you got GMs and head coaches that it's this draft. They they invested their reputation on taking the guy, and it didn't make them any better. But all right, my last game, Neil. My last NFL game. Okay. The Seahawks are playing the Falcons. Ooh. Woof. How about that game? Woof. I will be the only one watching it. Um, they might, No, you won't because it's the NFL. They may, uh, Lots may of be. people will be watching it. The only way I'm going to be able to see it will probably be on NFL Red Zone, and they may not even want to show the clips. But at that time, I'm taking the Seattle Seahawks minus two at home versus the Atlanta Falcons. All right, so interesting enough. So the Falcons, when they went out, they went out to the West Coast to play the Rams, right? And they're back on the West Coast again this week to play the Seahawks. They don't go home. They have to stay out there for two weeks. Yeah. So I'm going to say that that has an effect. They're going, playing the 12th man. That's a tough, not a lot of NFL teams do well in this model. Um, But it's actually better than going back across the country and coming right back. Uh, This happens a lot in the NFL. Um, I think it's difficult. I'm taking the Seahawks minus two. I don't know how. I just like it. Okay. That's my NFL picks for the year. All right. week. I'm down to two games for my final pick. We'll talk through these, and then I'll pick one. All right. I li- I, I've I've been on the Guardians for two weeks in a row. Not Guardians. What are they called? What are co- the Commanders. The Washington Commanders. Yeah. I was thinking about teams that switched names. I'm having a tough time with the Cleveland Indians and the Guardians. Yeah. All right. I, I, I like the Commanders plus six and a half against Philly. Philly looked really good the other night, and we're having a little bit, in my opinion, a little bit of an overreaction to them looking really good the other night at home against the Vikings. And the Vikings are a team that if you told me that by the end of the season we look up and go, man, they're really good at home and they are really shitty on the road, I could buy that completely. How bad was Kirk Cousins the other night? He was terrible. And how much of that was the Eagles' defense? How much of that was Kirk Cousins being terrible? 
Philly looked great. Like Jalen Hurts, that's as good as Jalen Hurts has looked in an NFL uniform in a long time. Some of that is because Jalen's worked his ass off. Hell, any uniform. And 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 some of that is because they, he has weapons now. He does that. And so when you have weapons as a quarterback, you look better, especially if you're doing your part, and he has. Jalen Jalen looked terrific. But it's a quick turnaround against the Washington team that's pretty good on defense. Then the other game that I like, and I think I like this one more, Arizona beat the Raiders last week. Believe me, I saw it. It was <laughs> – it was your walk in Cialis commercial. It was horrible. <laughs> yeah, it was like, here, haul this tub up the up the hill, jump in the cold water. Did you drop your soap on the way to the, get in the tub? So, apparently. <laughs> I'm still hurting. Um, I like the Rams minus three and a half at Arizona. Am I crazy? I mean. You I, like the what now? I like the Rams minus three and a half at Arizona. I don't, I can't figure the Rams out. Well, they won the Super Bowl. I'm talking about this year. Yeah. I can't figure them out. They don't know what they want to do in the run game. They haven't decided who they want to play at running back. Fantasy people are losing their mind because you don't know who to play at running back. Um, And the passing game, same thing. Stafford's elbow. They're, they're either really – I mean, they're a very inconsistent team, but, I mean, shit. I don't think that – I'm not on Arizona. No, they I'm, and they have owned Arizona. I, I'm not – I, I think the Arizona – the fad's coming to an end out in the desert. So, I, I think they're going to be a, a 500 team – at the end of the year. All right, well, I'm going to lay the three and a half with the Rams. I, th- I think there's enough there. Um, I- I'll make that my fifth pick. The Los Angeles Rams minus three and a half at Arizona. So my picks are Buffalo minus five and a half, Carolina plus two and a half, Jacksonville plus seven, the Rams minus three and a half, and the Niners minus one and a half. All right, my picks are the Dolphins plus six at home against the Bills, New England plus three at home versus Baltimore. Carolina plus three, so you get the extra half point. Make sure you get on that. Carolina yeah. plus three at home versus the Aints. Um, Packers on the road plus one at Tampa Bay. And the Seahawks minus two at home uh, versus the Falcons. All right. Good enough. What you talking about, Grind? Quick reminder that we're brought to you by Rain Total Body Fuel each and every uh, two, sh- two shows a week. I'm already empty, boss. Do you need another? Are you okay? I can get it. 300 milligrams of natural caffeine, BCAAs, electrolytes, zero sugar. It's got what you need to push the limits and achieve your goals. Check them out on Instagram at Rain Body Fuel to learn more. All right. Is it time to go to our, our bread and butter? Yeah, it's time. Damn right. Are you ready? I was born ready. The road to Boise. Yep. So far, I'm, 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 I need to be almost thinking about making reservations. I was already looking at big money lines, but I'm not there yet. I got time. I got, okay. I got, I've got a few weeks oh, before it's not, panic time. It's not panic time yet. Yeah. It's still, we're still in the, you know, we're in the middle, we're in like start of the second quarter where you got to, you, you can still stay in your game plan. Stay, keep, the, keep the course, run, and get, run game, play action. Yep. All right. All right. I'm going to let you go first. Okay. Um, I, I'm going to, I'm going to stay consistent here. Um, I've really liked what I've seen from Oklahoma so far this season. Uh, I like them at home. They're only giving 12 and a half to a Kansas State team that, eh, they're fine. They're not particularly multidimensional. Um, I, I love this. I think it's a blowout. Uh, Oklahoma's, Oklahoma minus 12 and a half at home against Kansas State. We have not talked. Is that correct? We have not talked about this, no. Neil, my first pick. Yes. Although it is the recently minted, as of Wednesday, new, the newest Quick U client, the Kansas State Wildcats, are going on the road yeah. and playing an, one of the original Quick U clients, the Oklahoma Sooners. Oh, this is, so quick, this is quick U versus Quick, quick U, U versus Quick U. You usually stay away from those. I usually stay away from these. But by God, we're not but you doing know what? Your, your business is growing so much that you're, it's, I, it's, it's inevitable. inevitable. Yeah, I'm having yeah. a tough time. So, hopefully no one in Manhattan, Kansas is listening today because I am also taking the Oklahoma Sooners minus 12 and a half against the fighting Manhattan, Kansas, Kansas State Wildcats. All right. Appreciate you being a client, Kansas State. Let's go. Okay. All right. With Connor, me- I'm on about 5,000 today. I'm ready to go. 
with my second pick, and I love this. I just I'm just gonna say I love I love this pick. And if it, if it goes bad, I, I'll just I, I'd make it a hundred times. Okay. Give me the Clemson Tigers minus seven at Wake Forest. I think the guy at Wake does a great job. I don't know if they're a client or not. He does a great job. Clemson is. But they don't have the athletes to match up with Clemson defensively. This game is always a blowout. There's a reason for that. Give me Clemson minus seven on the road at Wake. Yeah. And just so the fans know, I'm 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 not betting that I'm betting that one on my own. Okay. Um I had a feeling that you were gonna bet that one, so I, I was trying to have some podcast fun here, but I do love, love, love that line. Um, and the the whole point is, you know, Clemson's D line. What what Wake Forest tries to do offensively, and it's not a good matchup for them. It's a terrible matchup it, it, for Wake. It's, it's really their worst matchup. Yes. Now they may cover and all that stuff. And we look like assholes, right? But on paper and what you see on film, what your eyes see, everything on paper, everything matches up. This should be a, I would say, maybe a twenty-one to twenty-eight point win. Um, by Clemson. So, That's what I think too. Yeah, I, I like I like that yeah. one. All right, Neil. Yep. My second pick. Okay. I'm all ears. Grind, here we go, boys. The Missouri Tigers. Oh God. How can you put anything on this weird ass game? I'm about to tell you. Okay. The Missouri Tigers are rolling into Jordan Hare Stadium on Saturday. Mm-hmm. Auburn is favored by seven points. Is it up to seven? Yeah. Okay. But, Neil, I'm not betting the line. Oh, you're going under. The over-under is at 51 and a half. That's going to require one of these two people to score 27 points. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. That's not happening. Oh, I like this a lot. I mean, Missouri scored, basically, they scored 34 last week versus Abilene Christian, and one of them was on special teams. So, they managed to score 27 points against Abilene Christian. Mm Mm-hmm. Against La Tech, La Tech, the same La Tech that's going to Mobile and is two touchdown underdogs. I know. They didn't score 27 offensive points in that game either. They were all turnovers and short fields and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. I, by gosh, I'm going with the fighting Robbie Ashfords and Holden Griners are going to find a way to punt the ball 46 times. My man Eli Drinkwitz is going to be all juiced up. He's coming here throwing reverse passes and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. We're going three and outs, both sides. I'm going the under 51 and a half. I love that. I, I I wanted to make fun of you, but that's a that's a really good pick. Nobody can get to twenty seven, right? I'd be stunned from what I've seen. I mean, maybe the the freshman for Auburn comes in and just lights the world on fire, and a star is born. I mean, other than I have heard good things about the kid, but like in my opinion, if you're that damn good, wouldn't you put his ass out there by now? Well, you are to the point where if he's that good, someone it's looks up and go. goes, "Well, then where was he last week?" Well, I mean, you know, what are we doing? Yeah, I'm I'm going. I'm going under on that one all day long. If you had to bet that game from a spread standpoint, what would you do? Ooh, damn, are you putting a gun to my head? Yeah, I mean, I'm not, obviously this isn't one of your picks, but if someone came down and said you have to get this right, what would you do? I would probably, honestly, I would probably take Auburn and lay the points because I do, I, I do think that Auburn's going to have to run the ball and Missouri is struggling stopping the run right now I and mean, what I've seen. Um, it's going to be – there's such a sense of urgency there but I mean, dude, I'm just—I don't know. I mean, I, I would—it'd be a total coin flip. I just—I mean, Missouri's terrible at quarterback, man. They're bad. Terrible. Yeah. And they actually have good skill players, and like the receiver core is really good. Like Peeler's done an unbelievable job, but there's nobody out there to throw to him. It's like when you go watch these high school receivers that are really good, and their quarterback—you know—they're in triple option offense. They can't throw the ball to anybody. So I don't know. I'm just taking. Um, I'm taking the under, 51 and a half. Okay. Grind, you like the under at 51 and a half? Let me know, man. All right. Uh, my next one, I'm, I'm, this will be my final blue blood pick of the week, but I like this one. Uh, give me Ohio State at home, minus just 19. It's not much against a Wisconsin team that looks really mediocre to me. Wisconsin's got a big name. They got the fancy helmet that we're all used to, and everybody goes, oh, it's going to be Wisconsin, but they don't look like Wisconsin. This, this year, they just kind of look like Wisconsin. So Dude, give, I, me the, give me the Buckeyes minus the 19 at home. Love that pick. I was on my list. I'll be betting it. Uh, I'll be betting it personally. But, like, uh, so, you know, they don't play every year. 
And I went back and looked, and but here's the thing: is they haven't really changed. They haven't changed coaches. They don't change styles. If you go back and look, last time they played, the final was like thirty-eight seven. I could see that again. I could too. You know what I mean? Um, I really, really like that. Hey, by the way, how about this? The uh, Brendan's girlfriends aren't in here anymore, but we now we have Help now it. we have NFL bots. I know. Hey. We're making it. We're making. Happen. We're making. We're, we're arriving. Making, we're making waves. Yeah, our, our numbers keep going up, so that's good. We've, hey, they go. Hey, look, look. The, the Brendan's girlfriends aren't working anymore. <laughs> Let's throw some NFL bots in there and see if that works. <laughs> All right. Those are the bots you leave in there, right? Can you leave those in there? You could. I just. I just got rid of the bots. Okay. I'm not. Not big on bots. All right. It's pretty cool though. All right. Here we go. It is. I'm doing it. Okay, I'm I'm listening. The Florida Gators, oh, are going into Knoxville, Tennessee. They are this Saturday. Yes, two thirty CBS. Two thirty. The spread is at ten and a half. Tennessee is favored by ten and a half. Yep. Neil, you see this shirt I got on right now? I see it. I wore this on purpose. Oh, you are going to lay the points. Oh no, this is not fall orange, baby. We're going with Gator Orange today because it's the only orange shirt I own. All right. I'm laying, I'm taking Florida plus mm -hmm. 10 and a half on the road in Knoxville. The last 17 years. I, I, who cares? No, I'm, I'm doing your stat because that's what you do to me all the time. All right. The last 17 years, Tennessee has won one time. <sighs> My man, Billy Napier, little known fact about Billy. Uh -huh. Billy's dad, uh, God rest his soul, Billy's dad was a huge Tennessee fan. Huge Tennessee. They grew up like twenty minutes from Knoxville, right? Okay. Their whole he's got a bunch of family members that are Tennessee fans. He's bringing the Florida Gators into Knoxville, and he's covering ten and a half. I'm taking the Florida, and the other reason I like it because everybody else wants to lay the points. I'm going opposite. I'm taking Florida plus ten and a half. I love it. Somewhere between now and Saturday, AR is going to find touch on the ball. They're going to go out and they're going to have can't throw water balloons at him and let him catch so he can get soft hands. He's going to find a way to throw some touch passes. They're covering the 10 and a half. There you go. Chomp them. Okay. I don't have that game. <laughs> I what did you pick on your other one on that one? On, on Neil's picks? Yeah. I, I took Tennessee and laid the points because I've watched these two teams. All right, better yet, what did, ne what did Chase say? I can't remember. Jeffrey took Tennessee and laid the points. I mean, took Flo uh, Tennessee and laid the points. I don't remember the other. Don't others. tell me Chase went the other way because now I'll get nervous. But anyway. I can't recall. All right, but I'm still I'm I'm standing by it. I'm taking the Florida Gators plus ten and a half. Get you some of that ball nation. Okay. You're not back yet. I saw the second half, man, in that pit game, and I'm not I'm not ready. To, I'm not ready to jump on the Tennessee train yet. All right. I'm now getting to the conflict portion of the uh, of the show where I've got some games that I like. I'm trying to decide if I want to go on a game tonight and try to get myself off to a good start or if that would be bad juju if they if I got off to a bad start and I'd start dreading the rest of the weekend. Well, it happened to me last Thursday. I lost the Kansas City Chiefs game. Yeah, you still won the weekend. Yeah, but – Large part because of what happened to me Yeah, I mean, I went 5-6. It wasn't great. I mean, I need to file charges about what happened to me on Sunday. That was – Yeah. I mean, that was, that was an assault. And you'll get you a kit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go to the hospital. <laughs> So what happened was. <laughs> See what happened was. <laughs> but for right now, hmm, do I want to play? So I got two home dogs that I'm looking at money lines. Oh, you going? To, you want to go ahead and start your money line, or are you going to take? No, the points but I'm, on one but I'm and... thinking about taking the points on one and money line, line on, on the other. Okay. And then I have a game that I really like. That's a big line, though. On what I think is going to be a pissed off team at oh. home against a bad team. Okay. And my gut says go there. And so I'm going to. I'm going to stick with my Purdue Boilermakers. And I'm going to lay 20 at home against FAU. Because I don't think FAU is very good. And Purdue's pissed. And they should be pissed. Probably a rough week of practice. Which should be. Because it was what cost them was discipline. And that's the worst. It's one thing to lose because Kyler Murray just makes a great play. Yeah. It's another thing to lose because somebody fell down. Physical things. Yep. Life happens. Yep. Right? Somebody pees in the end zone. I mean. 
<laughs> but it's another thing. <laughs> I'm on fire today, man. Let's go. But to that point, yeah, that's a loss because of discipline. Yep. Those are the worst losses. Worse. They lost because they couldn't stop talking. Yeah. They beat them on the field, but then they had to talk about it. And instead of kicking off from the 30, they kicked off from the 10. And those 20 yards got them beat. Correct. So I think it's been a week. I'm going to take Purdue. I'm going to lay 20 points. And the more I talk about it, the more I love it. I actually like that pick. So, because I'm with you on FAU. I think they're a lot better than FAU. I like that pick. Okay. It's on my list, I actually bet, in the uh, personal there. By the way, Chase had Florida covering the spread. Oh, shit. <laughs> he didn't do good last week, did he? Mm-mm. I don't care. Me and Chase are going to win. Chase, good luck to you. I, I, I'm feeling I, I'm feeling froggy, man. I, I don't I – don't, I'm feeling good. Feeling froggy? I'm feeling froggy. Okay. I'll give you another one. You know, if what you say to somebody is, is you know, when they're uh, – you ask them if they're feeling froggy and then jump while they're – if they're getting crazy and then they're saying nothing between me and you but air and opportunity and I got all the air. All right, here we go. My right. fourth pick. Okay. Or whatever pick this is. It's your fourth. The Notre Dame Fighting Irish are rolling into Chapel Hill. Oh, this is a weird game. What's the line on this? Like two points? One and a half. One and a half. North Carolina. This actually started out with Notre Dame being favored. Moved very quickly to North Carolina being favored by a point and a half. I'm laying the point and a half on the Tar Heels. I think Notre Dame's offense is atrocious. Um, you know, they don't have any other anybody else to put in there but Drew Pine. And I like Drew Pine. I've known the kid since he was a ninth grade good kid uh, from Connecticut. But at the end of the day, they're going into Chapel Hill. This place is going to be rocking. You know, it's not every day you get Notre Dame to come to your place and things like that. I mean, I, when was the last time Notre Dame went to Chapel Hill ever? I mean, that place is going to be juiced. Didn't they go there? I thought they played up, up north. I thought that maybe it was during the pandemic year they played there. I thought they played in Notre Dame. But anyway, I don't – whatever it is, the yeah. place is going to be juiced. You know, they were probably triple mass the last time, and you couldn't hear them uh, the last time they came there. All right, so – Thank God, by the way. Yeah, I know. Because had they not worn the masks, we wouldn't even be having this game right now. Yeah, our next episode, we'll talk about triple masking in Cialis. We'll take you through the next <laughs> three hours. That's that take you through the next three hours. Oh, we got more NFL back. I, just want, I mean, whose girlfriends are these? All right, so these might be the people that assaulted me last <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> you know what they say about criminals? They always return to the scene of the crime. <laughs> oh, that's good shit. All right. I'm taking the Tar Heels minus a point and a half. I think they outscore them. I think uh I think I think this is like a thirty eight forty two to twenty game. I mean, I don't even think really? it's particularly close, yeah. I like the Tar Heels all over Notre Dame. I think it's a bad matchup for Notre Dame. It's a bad loss for Notre Dame if they lose this. They've got to start winning some games at some point. I, I, listen, Freeman's fine, uh, but they got to start winning some games here soon. I mean, Notre Dame's not Notre Dame's not built to go four and eight. We're gonna find out. I mean, it's gonna be an interesting uh, season uh, for those guys. But I, I like, dude. I like. Uh, I like North Carolina minus one and a half. A okay. lot. All right. All right. All right. So, be your fifth I, game, right? I, yeah. And I really thought about West Virginia minus two and a half at Virginia Tech. If something scares me about Vitek on a Thursday night, it's going to get loud and maybe crazy. the coolest place to play. It's awesome. Now they're they're not good this year, but they're desperate. So I'm going to stay away from that. I've already bet it personally. By the way, you bet West Virginia. I took. I had it. It was at. I got it on Tuesday, maybe right after the show. So it was Tuesday, probably I got it. But I, it was at uh, they were minus one twenty, eighty five, one twenty, whatever it was. I put twenty five to win twenty. That's all I did. I put money line West Virginia. Okay. And I think West Virginia will win, but it spooks me a little bit because I think West Virginia is the better football team. They are. It's a tough environment, though. It is. That's why I took money line instead of points. So I'm going to go with home teams the rest of the way. Okay. A game that I love, I do. I, 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 I won with this team in week one. And I, I think they shake up the college football world on Saturday. Give me Oregon State plus five and a half at home against USC. Have you lost your damn mind? I have not. 
Are you serious? I'm right totally now? serious. Are you serious? I'm serious. They're really good at home. Like that's going to be one of your five picks. That's one of my five picks. Are you just you? You are. You're trying to go to Boise now, right? I don't want to go to Boise. You're gonna have. This is one nothing of those. Against, hey, nothing against Boise. I'm sure it's nice, but it's a little close to Christmas, and the wife's already pissed off about this hey, idea. This is one of those games that when you go to the press conference that we have, and you, and you go, you know, look, the guys we came out with played really hard. Mm-hmm. Hey, hey, coach, can you explain to me the pick that you had when you took Oregon State over USC? At five and a half points, can you explain that call? And you go like, I, I you know, uh, it was you, my fault. Don't blame it was none of the kids' fault. It was the the blame lies right here. Like you're gonna have to answer that in the press conference. Okay. And the, and you know who's gonna be asking the question? Yeah. Laurel. Well, yeah. She's gonna be asking the question. She's gonna have. She's gonna sit here and go, Neil, are you telling me the reason that you're going to Boise, Idaho, is that you picked Oregon State to cover against USC? Mm-hmm. Five and a half points. <sighs> Isn't that the line? Isn't it five and a half it right is. now? Yeah. It is. Okay. I don't like that one. All right. That's okay, though, because I'm fixing to pick one you don't like. Are you ready? Oh, I know where you're going. I know where My you're going. My <laughs> fifth pick. Uh-huh. There's a little ball game down in Dallas this weekend. I know it's costing me money. That the McCready household is going broke. And what we need to do is if y'all all could hit the subscribe button and the like button so Neil – can have enough money to eat on this next week because he's spending a lot of money in Dallas this next week. We'd all appreciate that. Yeah, one of them's got a one of them's splitting an Airbnb with a bunch of friends. One's at a hotel with a bunch of friends. Um, I anticipate I anticipate being asked for a little extra money because money's going to get spent in Dallas. They say people until you have connection to one of these two schools you don't realize what a big deal this is from a just a party standpoint yeah it's kind of like the and to me it's it used to not be like this but it's kind of turned into the uh texas oklahoma of the sec does that it make is. sense mm-hmm. yeah it's a it's a cool game for the students they all go yeah forget the football part i didn't realize how big of a deal it was on those campuses Harmon over i'm saying you're spending over a thousand dollars this weekend, huh? Easy. Yeah. Easy, right? Yeah. Like really easy. Yeah, I mean, realistically, I, <laughs> I don't want to think about it. <laughs> so make sure you hit the subscribe and like button, please. Yeah. There's 172 of you in here right now. Hit that friggin'. There we go. We got one. Hit the like button. Get my get my guy. You know, you do, hey, what you don't realize is you just bought my guy a gallon of gas all the way to down all the way to Dallas. If, if you want to super chat real quick, we'll do, <laughs> we'll do that as well. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be rough. <laughs> All right, so in the Texas A&M Arkansas game, mm-hmm. the it's Ag- a really interesting game. It's an interesting game. Yeah, the Aggies are favored by a point and a half. Yeah, Neil, it's gone down from two to two and a half to two to one and a half. Yeah, Neil, mm-hmm. it's not enough, my friend. <laughs> it's not enough, and I know this isn't going to be an emotional bingo. I know this is going to be an emotional for you. Yeah. All right, Texas A&M, mm-hmm. all over. Arkansas. Really? Yeah. I like them big. You like them big. Why? I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) No, here's all kidding aside. I think in my opinion, no, I'm being serious. I was being funny. Okay. All right. All kidding aside. I think that uh, Max Johnson at quarterback, unlike a lot of popular opinions, I think it's going to make A&M a better offense. Not I said it two weeks ago that that was the answer. He showed up last week, and everybody's like, "Oh, they didn't do shit." Da, 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 da. He was okay. Let me tell you something. They played it. Look, people were sleeping. I heard. I heard you. I heard on the other podcast one of these days this week when I was trying to catch up. I was actually impressed with Miami last week, and I think Max Johnson made about five. I went back. I watched the film. I think he made five throws that would have been sacks weeks before that. I like him standing in the pocket. He can deliver the ball. He's not going to get them beat. Okay, he's going to keep the tra- chains moving. And people can hate on A&M all they want to. But here's the problem. And I know we're getting a little bit healthy at Arkansas, but when you, I talked to you about this off the air today. Yeah, they got a couple guys back on defense. But Odom's having to do a lot more four-down stuff than he's done in the past. Yeah. Which is not a good sign, in my opinion, because that defense allows you to – and it's the same defense that Ole Miss runs now, same defense that Tulsa's running, TCU, yada, 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 right? That defense is, is difficult to prepare for. Um, but he's kind of gotten out of it, and I think that's that's led to some issues, um, dude. I, I don't know, man. I like I like uh, 
A and M probably by I'm gonna say fourteen. Oh wow. Yeah. It'd be a big win for them if they win by fourteen points. I like what DJ's doing on defense, man. And he's got players. I'm a big DJ Durkin fan. I've never actually I don't know if I've even had Now last year DJ Durkin's defense got lit up by this offense. Yeah, but that had a lot in my opinion, though, mm-hmm. last year's issues, and I've talked to you about this last year. You think that was when, an Ole Miss personnel That was situation? a personnel thing. When Springer yeah. came back, the defense magically got better. I think it was a, the the uh, nickel they had last year. Uh-huh. I love that kid. It was fun to watch. He was like watching Mike Hilton for me. I love that kid. Did yeah. he make an NFL roster? He did not. How in the hell is that possible? I don't know. He really fit that role incredibly well. physical. Yeah. Like, that was – Good player. Great player. I love watching him play. He was exciting to watch for me. I'm a football geek, but – um, I, I love what they're doing, man. I think DJ Durkin's a real deal as a uh, football coach. Um, I'm I'm all over A and M on this one. One of my favorite games of the week. Wow, I'm I'm really surprised because this is not a game I would touch with real money. Yeah, I think this game's super tight. I think it's a fourth quarter. Who makes a big play? Who makes a stupid mistake? Game. <laughs> Charles, ahead. thank you very much. <laughs> And uh, the trolls are back. They're, they're loving us today. They are. They're, they're, they're here. Charles, thank you for the super chat. I will, uh, I will, I will make sure that uh, the girls are not aware of, of the, uh, the message, but I suspect. Uh, <laughs> They'll probably hear about it. Uh, well, there probably will be beverages. <laughs> no. Yeah, I saw pictures from last year's game. Um, I just remind, hey. Take Ubers. Yeah. You know, be safe. Be smart. Um, I don't know what I, I, if I had to bet this game. Mm, I don't, I wouldn't even know where to go on the over under. It's low. I, I mean, but, I would, I think it, but Arkansas scored a bunch of points. Arkansas's three games, everything's over. AM's three games, everything's under. This, the thing about it is that you just don't know what's going to give here. Well, the consistent, the one consistent thing that you've gotten out of both these teams is A&M's defense. Is A&M's defense. But Arkansas's offense has been consistent. Otherwise, they lose last week. They've answered the bell offensively three times. The truth is everyone said they would be so much worse on offense because Traylon Burks is gone, and the truth is they're better. No, and they're, more, they're more diverse on offense than they've ever been. Jefferson's playing better. Defensively, they've just been bad, and some of that is injuries, and some of that is personnel. They're getting a couple of guys back. I just don't know. It's really close. Yeah. I'm, and Pittman covers. Yeah. I th- I don't know, man. I, I just got a feeling. Okay. Rolling with it. All right. Okay. So we're money line time. It's money line time. I'm excited about my money line today. Yeah, I'm not excited about mine. Um, but I don't hate it. It's a weird place to play for teams. A lot of teams go to this place. And it just goes badly. I'm going to take the Washington State money line at home against Oregon. Oregon might be the team that is really good at home and not good away from home. Are you really doing this twice in one in one podcast? You're going straight to the press conference right after this. Like you're not even going to have the cool off time. Look, I get it. It's a plus 210 on the money line. Laura, if you're listening, I didn't. Laura's have, not listening. I didn't have anything to do with this. Laura's not. listening. I did not have anything to do with this. You you think Washington State has a chance to beat Oregon? Yeah, I do. Okay. I mean, all right. Give me your money line. We're making fun of me. Give me your oh, money it's, line. It's, it's on right now. My money line pick: the Rutgers. I thought about this. Scarlet Knights. I thought about this. Are at home. Just across the pond from New York City in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And they are playing the Iowa Hawkeyes. Yep. They are seven and a half point dogs at home. I thought thought about the under on this game. All right, so the under as of today is the lowest under in the history of college football. It's like 34. 34 now. Yeah. Um, Dude, all kidding aside, I'm taking taking Rutgers money line at plus – 250. What's the Washington State money line? Did you look at that part up? 210. 210. So you're 210. I'm one 250. All right, here's the deal. All kidding aside. Okay, here's the problem with this game. And I thought about it really yeah. hard. This is not Iowa talking. Iowa's defense has been terrific. Yeah. Rutgers' offense has been plotting. How does Rutgers score 
against Iowa? That's the question. Yeah, correct. So I literally think this is like the two identical teams. Now, I was a little bit better, okay? But here's the and look, if you want really free money, I guess you could take Rutgers plus seven and a half. Hell, I don't know if Iowa can score seven and a half points. I don't I mean they'll probably if anybody could figure out how to score exactly seven and a half points, it would be Iowa. That's true. You know, hey, we're gonna kick this extra point and it's gonna get stuck <laughs> with half the ball being over yeah. the crossbar. Yeah. Um, but I, it's 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 for a plus two fifty. It is recipe for for value betting value to take the money line. Oh, I agree with that because a team that can't score, okay, they can't score versus air. Like they have four turnovers when they do like grid versus air. There's no defense. They turn the ball over four times to the invisible man. Okay, Rutgers the same way. They're they're good on defense. They're eh on offense. That's putting it nicely. Yeah. And Their offense is be, is not as good as like, bad. I'm counting on like this like zero to zero game in the fourth quarter, and the Iowa punter has torn his groin because he's punted 66 times yeah. and he shanks one out of bounds. Okay, Rutgers is going to get up and run quarterback sneak twice, and we're going to figure out how to get a field goal off at the end of the game to win three nothing. Three nothing. Yeah. All right. That, listen, that's not inconceivable. As crazy as that yeah. sounds, that's not a un, that's not an unrealistic scenario. I just think it's good value from a money line bet. Um, and to be honest with you, I didn't see the yeah. only other like I could have got crazy with you. But if that's two fifty and Florida's plus two seventy eight at ten and a half, like to me, I mean, I can see Rutgers winning the game without even question because Iowa can't score. I mean, they scored twenty seven points against Nevada. Yeah, I mean that's terrible, dude. I know they're your Hawkeyes, but I know. But now that was a weird night, two weather delays and all that stuff. I mean, you just there's yeah. Who knows? Otherwise, they had scored seven points if it was a normal day. You know, Nevada was halfway back to the Reno. <laughs> it's assault all week. <laughs> just, just, just. No, I just I like the value. I'm going Rutgers at plus two fifty. It's not bad. I don't hate it. Did you almost bet against your Hawkeyes mm-hmm. on the money line? Thought about it. Oh, I yeah. thought about I Emotional thought about hedging. I thought about doing the money line and the under because I actually love the under. The problem with the under is anything that gets close to like an overtime or something, and you get over. Yeah, the one thing you do have an advantage of the overtime saving you a little bit is the new rules. Right. Like I don't think they would score touchdowns in overtime. They just kick field goals. They could. But like, uh, so I did look this up. Rutgers is just. Rutgers is every bit as bad offensively as Iowa is. Yeah, it's bad. It's bad. And they really have – they play Boston College. They beat Boston College 22-21. to 21. Yeah. And, but they're all, they are undefeated. And Shiano's a – like, Shiano has got his – he's a tough dude now. Oh, these are two tough physical teams. Yeah, this is not yeah, – yeah. his mentality has taken place on these players, and he's won there before. They're going to be excited um, to host this game. I, I just, oh, sure. I, for a home dog, I'm, I'm all over it. Okay. All right, you want to go over a couple – before we get out of here, you want to go over a couple more games that yeah, we sure. didn't bet that yeah, I like? We'll, we'll touch a couple, sure. All right, so in my pool, curious to see your uh, response to this and, and the uh, chat's response. I like the Baylor-Iowa State under 46. I thought about this game a lot too. And I thought about, I thought about the under – I thought about the Baylor money line. I think Baylor's a little better than Iowa State, but Iowa State's good at home. Yeah. It's a tough place to play. Tough place to play. Two really good coaches. I just stayed away from it because it was just – you could tell me multiple outcomes. I'd be like, yeah, I could see that. I like – you know, Baylor's struggling a little bit on offense, which is shockingly – I mean, because I thought the uh, shaping kid looked good at the end of the last year when he came in and, yeah. and reserve. Yeah. Not seeing that. And they, and they put all their eggs in his basket. They did. And – I really haven't seen that development in year, you know, for the next year. Mm-hmm. Surprise me. They'd probably like to have that back. Yeah, but that's why I went. Well, I was going to go with the under there. I've already told you about. I'm taking West Virginia over Virginia Tech tonight. Yeah, I'm probably talk regretting that already. All right, here's a game that nobody's going to talk about. That I'm, I'm kind of like almost like I'm, I'm having like buyer's remorse already. Is it too late to change? It is. So never mind. On which one? Uh, you can change. Can I change? Absolutely. I'll let you change because I don't want to be responsible. I don't want Laura <laughs> mad at me because I didn't advise you. All right. Um, I'm gonna. What take, are you changing first? I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Go, I'm gonna get away from Oregon State. I'll go away from that. I'll stay with my money line. Okay. Because the Oregon State money line is only one ninety. Okay. And I'll go. Uh, I'll go West Virginia minus two and a half. West Virginia minus two and a half. 
Just hey, let me look that up real quick for you. I think you. I had it at one and a half. Okay. Unless it's changed. It was at. I had it at one and a half at one time. This was yesterday, I think, when I wrote this one down. I'll pull it up while we're talking. Are you mean pull it up real fast? I got, you got it right it? here. Okay. It's at two and a half. Okay. Um. All right, Cole. So my man changed his pick. So make sure we get that noted. By the way, Cole's doing a great job. Cole's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Cole has been doing the social media stuff for the last week or so. So if you guys make sure you give him a shout out, he's doing a really good yeah, job. Yeah, and, and do follow us on Twitter if you would. The, the uh, McCready Siski. Yeah, watch Oregon State win now, and I'll be like, God, <laughs> I'll hate myself. <laughs> I know. Monday will be fun. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So sneaky, sneaky game right here that I almost bet was in my pool. SMU is at home. Oh, against TCU. Against TCU, and they're getting two points. Dude, SMU's got a squad. Yeah, I didn't even understand this line, but I kind of saw it and I went rivalry game, Metroplex stuff, and kind of. Eh. I'm going to watch it here. The interesting part is, I don't know if this has ever happened. So you know, Dykes leaves SMU to go to TCU across town, mm-hmm. and so he's just to play his all the players. He's playing his own team. Yeah, that he recruited. Yeah, and he did a great job of assembling, assembling that that team, and now he's got to go play against them, and as a under and as a f- small favorite, but he's got to go there. That's an interesting deal, man. You know, Fort Worth and Dallas and all that area right there. Sure. What is the official location of SMU? Is that, are they both for, considered Fort Worth? No, no, no. SMU's in Highland Park, which is uh, kind of the ritzy part of downtown Dallas. It's more ritzy than where TCU is? Oh, yes. I've been to TCU Highland once. Park's where uh, I've never been to SMU. George W. Bush lives. Oh. Like, if, like Mark Cuban, those kind of people? Yeah. I mean, Highland Park is, yeah. Okay. I have never been to the SMU's campus for whatever reason. Yeah. But I like SMU there at home. Um, we talked about that. And then the one, the last one, I just couldn't pull the trigger on it, but I'm probably going to because it's going to be late and the Miller Lite will be flowing. Mm-hmm. Utah. You sounded like George W. Bush when you said that right there. I've never been accused of that. Yeah. Um, Go ahead. He's a little more educated than I am probably. Although hey. do I have a master's. Um <laughs> Utah minus 15 at Arizona State. I thought about this one, too, because Arizona State's in shambles. Yeah, I, I don't – I don't know, man. I, I don't see them rallying around some new coach. They lost to SCS school. I think the kids are trying to figure out where they're going next year. There's an NCAA investigation Yeah, it's coming. a mess. It's a mess. If this guy at Arizona State turns around this thing around, he deserves – probably deserves the job because there's – I mean, this is going to be a really uh, small list for this one. So there's three other games that I liked okay. that I didn't take. Yep. I like, don't love, South Alabama minus 13 against Louisiana Tech. Yep. Like it. Don't love it because Tech's – Sonny's doing a good job there, and they're playing hard, and, and they're, they're improving a little bit. I would have taken South Alabama and laid the points on that one. That, that's what I would have done too. Yeah. I thought about Kansas minus the seven, seven and a half against Duke, but I haven't seen enough about Duke, and I just kind of keep waiting for Kansas to go, you know what, this is, this is rarefied air and we can't handle it. Like Duke, I, I just uh, – it's almost like – The guy at Duke's doing a good job. Great job. Yeah. From Texas A&M, right? Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I, I stayed away from that one. And then the other one that I, I love, I'm not going to bet it this week because I don't do SEC games, but I think Ole Miss is going to blow Tulsa out of the – out of the water. Yeah. I, I love Ole Miss minus the, was it 19 and a half? To me, that's kind of free. It may have gone up. I looked at that. Let's see what that one is. I got it pulled up right here. It's kind of free money. The, the Ole Miss game. I mean, so. Because I know people are like, oh, they're going to be looking ahead to Kentucky. I'm just telling you, this coaching staff is not looking ahead to Kentucky. 21 and a half. Is it up that much? Yeah. yeah. I still would lay them. Here, here's what I looked at. The thing I looked at the Ole Miss Tulsa game was the over. And it's moved up too. I think it's up to. Uh, it was at sixty. Was it sixty two? Is it going up? It's at sixty five and a half. Yeah, it's a little high. Um, I do think this. Uh, I know we have a lot of Ole Miss fans saying so. I I've watched. I went back and watched Tulsa's three games this week. I've I've watched. I refused to watch the Ole Miss Central Arkansas game. I refused to. I don't blame me. Um, I was there and wanted to strike. Yeah. Um, I do think there's some interesting things here that fans would be cool into. I do think Tulsa is going to score some points. I don't know how many. The, the, let me tell you how many they're going to score, as much as their offensive line is going to allow them to score. Because Tulsa's offensive line is eh, suspect. But they have good skill players. 
They do. They've they have a handful of pretty good receivers. Yeah, three good receivers. Yeah. I think they have three SEC quality receivers. Um, they're running back. They got a kid that's like two hundred and forty pounds at running back. He's like a poor man's Derrick Henry. Like a, if you, a very poor. Yeah, but if you get that, if he gets going downhill, like you don't want to tackle that guy. I mean, he's food stamps, Derrick Henry. <laughs> that's good. I mean, I mean, come on. No, I'm not. I don't want to. I'm not trying to put him in that no, category. No, I, I'm I saying running that. style. Yes. Okay, running. Let me rephrase that. For somebody goes, oh, Siski said this guy was Derrick Henry. Yeah. He got five yards rushing. He's running style to where you don't want to let the guy get a running start. You want to make him make a cut in the backfield, move his feet in the backfield where he can't continue to go downhill. When he is effective is when he's able to get to linebacker level running full speed. And then he's 240 pounds, and you got to tackle a dude running full speed. Um, yeah, I, I, had, do, I had 45-17. I think Tulsa scores some points. They're going to throw it a lot. The quarterback's a good player. Is that 50-62? Yeah. That's why I, 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 I just can't get him to 60. Anything more than that. Here's the thing from a coaching standpoint. Come fourth quarter, if you're Lane and you've got a big lead, as much as you might want to keep running offense and stuff, you do have to think, hey, in less than a week, we got. Yeah, he's got to get the guys out. I got a big, I got a big game here. Um, quarterback's a good player for Tulsa. They got three good receivers to running back, offense line suspect, defense. Here's the game within the game that I'm interested in. I'm, I'm actually plugged in to watch this because I'm a football geek. Mm -hmm. Is there's not many teams running this defense. Well, two of them are Ole Miss and Tulsa. So they run the same schematics, right? Right. Base. Uh, there's some different things. Right, but, sure. And so for the fans that un don't understand this, when you go against a defense that's similar like that, you know the, the couple plays that really get from an offensive standpoint schematically, which give that scheme problems. It may be a route combination, a run, a run, whatever it is. And I'm interested to see the schemes that Ole Miss comes up with an offense to attack it and then Tulsa comes up with an offense to attack the scheme. Um, but – I think you're going to see if you're if you're back back in can cover. You're going to get to see that. Oh, that's for sure. Yeah, they they are they are going to throw the football. they're going to throw the football. Yeah, that's what they do. Um, they'll run it if you if you just give them the run. If you give them a, a numbers in the box, they'll run it. Yeah, they gave they gave uh, um, whatever the MAC team they were playing Northern Illinois was it who they played. Yeah, they were they gave them fits a little bit in the run game. Gave Wyoming fits in the run game. Um, I think this is the best team Ole Miss has played so far. I 1,000% agree with that. Yeah. I think – and just to give you a good – in my opinion, I think they're better – I think Tulsa is better than Vanderbilt. Okay. I think Tulsa is better than um, Missouri. Okay. But I think that's – you're getting a lower-tier SEC team to come in here to kind of give you – it's definitely going to help with the speed of the game and things like that going into next week because it's going to get real here in about eight days. Yeah, I, days. I think they're – I think they're pleased that this is – the game that they're playing. They, they, I think they know, as much as you'd love to just cruise through and beat the hell out of everybody, I, I think they know that it's they're stepping up soon and they need to they need to rev the engine a little. Yeah, they do. Uh, but I like the – I mean, I think, again, Tulsa scores points. I don't, and how many points they score is going to depend on how dominant – how much they can get away with up front offensively. Because their defense, in my opinion, they kind of – Tulsa's defense I'm talking about. Yeah. Kind of bend, don't break. The same scheme, but they're not as stern against the run. Yeah. Um, Ole Miss is going to score points. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm in because I want to see the quarterback throw the ball. All right. We'll, uh, we'll stop it there. Again, I, speaking of Ole Miss and Tulsa, Pete's pigskin preview. About 24 minutes away yeah. right now on the MPW digital feed. So you got time to go uh, grab – Grab a brew or something. Yeah, grab another rain, whatever the case may be. Uh, we're brought to you by Rain Total Body Fuel twice a week. Every week we'll be with you. I'm super excited about it. 300 milligrams of natural caffeine, BCAAs, electrolytes, zero sugar. It's got what you need to push the limits, achieve your goals. Check them out on Instagram at Rain Body Fuel to learn more. Again, in this, in the, uh, if you're listening to this, ignore what I'm about to say. If you're in the stream, uh, Pete's Pigskin Preview at 5, The Butcher versus The Spin Instructor at 6.30, and then uh, – Henry's guys tonight at seven. So we got a, a lot more for you. You can just leave us on one of your uh, one of your TVs, and we'll entertain you for most of the evening. We'll be back for uh, some of the games tonight. We'll we'll watch our uh, Browns Steelers. We'll watch West Virginia and Virginia Tech. We'll keep you up to date and uh, have a little fun. Ben Mintz joins on Hanray's guys this evening. So for Tyler Siski, 
I'm Neil McCready. That does it for uh, this edition of McCready and Siski, powered by Rain Total Body Fuel. We'll be back on Monday to make fun of my picks and uh, or, mine. Or, or somebody's and and have some fun. So thanks for being with us today. Have a great weekend. Uh, enjoy the rest of your evening, and we'll hopefully talk to you soon. <laughs>